Hi, I'm Kiss Sandra Martin with Pro Investing 24-7. Today we're going to talk about financing. Once you figure out what you're going to buy, either a rental property or a flip property, you really need to get comfortable with your finances. You need to know how much money you actually have, and then if you need to borrow some additional money to acquire the property, that's what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to give you some options of actually how to buy these properties. We're going to talk about a cash option, we're going to talk about traditional financing with the bank, and then we're going to get into some creative stuff, maybe using the seller and using their position of equity to help you acquire this property. A little bit different, but we'll show you how it's done and give you some options about how to approach it. Today we're going to be talking about our cash option. If you're in a position to buy the real estate you want to buy with just solely cash, there are some serious benefits to doing that. It won't take nearly as long because you're not dealing with a bank or another financial, financial institution. You're going to realize pretty quickly whether or not you have enough cash to buy the property outright or you're just not going to be able to and you're going to have to look for some financing options. If you do decide that you can purchase solely with cash, that's probably the strongest offer you could ever make when you want to buy real estate. However, you need to understand that once you buy with cash, all of your cash is in this property now. So you need to make sure that you leave enough for taxes and insurance and any repairs that you may not have already accounted for. Um, you may have bought the property with some rehab costs, but there's always some surprises and you always got to put a little bit of buffer into your numbers. Hey everyone, it's Bill from Pro Investing 24-7. Casey just got done telling you about some of your options when you're using cash to acquire real estate. I'm going to talk about traditional financing. One of your options, of course, when you're financing a property is to go to the bank. You can go to any bank you want to. You can go to the bank you're, you've banked with all your life, your, fr your friends, your buddies, something like that. Uh, but be aware to shop your money around. Banks are just like grocery stores. They, they run different specials. Money can be shopped around. One bank might give you 5%, another 4.5%, another three, 4 and 3 quarters. It pays to shop around. Don't be dragged in just because you banked one place all your life assuming that they're going to give you the best deal. The fact is the banks are, are desperate for to loan money right now, contrary to what the media would tell you. The, uh, lending money is the only way they're going to make money, so therefore shop your business around. Some of the things that banks are going to look for, they're going to look at your credit score, they're going to look at your debt to income ratio, and of course they're going to look at your income over the past few years. Really, you need to be aware that when you're going to shop for a loan, you need to have a financial package put together to present to the banks. They're going to want to see the last couple pay stubs. They're going to want to see your last couple years tax returns. And the more you're prepared and you have this in a package to give to the banks, the higher the probability the banks are going to see you as a credible, uh, bankable business person. When you're doing real estate, obviously, in the past few years, real estate's been brutalized in terms of a market sector and so the banks are really really sensitive about who they're loaning to but if you're the right person and you're the right package trust me they'll write you a check hi we just talked about traditional financing options however the truth of the matter is you may not always fit the bank's mold to get a loan if that's the case it's not the end of the world there's definitely some other options that you can explore um, other people are definitely in better financial positions to help you out that might be a family member or that might be the actual seller of the property you're trying to buy. Um, family members, you can actually beat the bank's rate if you get money from a family member and say that you'll double the rate they're getting on their savings. Right now, um, they're not getting a whole lot of interest on their savings, so if you double it, it can actually be less than the interest rate the bank's charging. So you both make out. You're making your family member more money, and you can get that real estate that you want to build your wealth. Um, another position is the seller financing. The seller can, if they have enough equity in their property, then they'll be in a position to let you pay them monthly instead of a bank. Once again, they're making out on the interest rate instead of the bank. So it can be a win-win and give you a different option other than just dealing with the bank. The most important thing is you got to find out who is in the best position to help you. If it's not a family member or if it's not the seller, there are some other options and Bill's going to talk about those next. Okay, Casey just told you about some financing op options, alternative financing options. I'm going to discuss a few more. I uh, also want to point out, just as this animal changes a lot, the, the deal can change a lot depending on the financing 
off, off the, the, the financing option you choose. Um, if you go conventional financing, it's going to look one way. If you do cash, it's going to look another. If you do alternative financing, it could look totally different again. So make sure you crunch your numbers and do your homework. The two other uh, opportunities you have in alternative financing is hard money, which basically means you're paying a, a higher interest rate than the bank. If the bank is offering 5 or 6%, a hard money loan might be 7, 8, 9, 10%, depending on your credit profile. Not a bad option necessarily, because if you're doing a flip, you're going to be getting that money back in four or five months, and you're looking at what four or five, six hundred dollars interest on maybe a twenty or thousand, twenty or thirty thousand dollar profit. So, you know, would you pay five or six hundred dollars to make twenty, thirty thousand dollars? I would. Uh, the other option, of course, is a 401k or an IRA. A lot of people don't realize that you can use your IRA or your 401k to finance deals. You could use those to take a loan out or you could actually put the real estate inside the IRA. The IRA is just an asset carrying vehicle that can hold money, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, or real estate. So when you do that, a lot of different options. Your retirement income grows tax free, for example. Also, you, you can get through contribution, contribution limits in which maybe that's a rental property that's making $12,000 a year you can put all, plow all that back into the IRA or 401k. So again, just to review, you can do uh, your 401k, your IRA, or you can go the hard money route for alternative financing. Okay, so today, Casey and I have talked to you about financing. Financing is one of the most important aspects of your project because let's face it, if you don't get the financing right, you can go down and we don't want that. Casey and I are here to help you through those steps. Today we've talked about the various different forms of financing you can do or use to act, acquire your real estate. You can use cash, which has a number of pros and cons. You can use traditional bank banks or traditional lending, which have their own pros and cons. Or you can do alternative lending, which of course has its own pros and cons as well. You need to look, work your way through all of them to figure out what makes sense for you. For more investing strategies and tips, please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. Have a great day.